this tutorial, which is going to be looking at my Illustrator program, uh, which we uh, use to create the, the cartoony illustrations and JMOL. So this tutorial is gonna end up being juggling a lot of windows. So I wish you luck on your own computers, but I'd like you to follow along on, on some of the things we're going to do. Uh, so just a few uh, ideas before we jump into to playing with the tools. Um, and these slides here are, are in the uh, JMOL tutorial um, folder uh, on Teams if you wanna go back and look at them. Okay, so the, the illustrations, uh, we're gonna be doing two different kinds of illustrations for the articles. We're gonna do, be doing these um, cartoony ones for the first and second sections and a, a JMOL for the exploring part um, and room for creativity here. Uh, if you want to, to play games with your topics, but we also want to try to keep the style in keeping with the 250 other articles that are on the site. So it shouldn't look too different. And so the way we're going to do that is uh, we're going to spend most of the day tomorrow uh, working up your illustration program for your articles. And I'll do consultations with each of the teams uh, and we'll work up, uh, we'll work up the illustrations together. Um, just based on your ideas. Uh, and at the end of, of that whole process, we'll have a few deliverables, which is these illustrations for the two parts, um, a JS mall, which is an interactive um, uh, visualization uh, for use down here. And then we also need a static image uh, that goes on the, the page when the, when the page first shows up before people click on the, the J mall and get to the interactive. Okay. So now, before you ever start and go to the, uh, the, the programs, I want you to do this with your, uh, the, the structures that you want to illustrate, which is to spend some time with Mallstar or with JMall or with the structure summary page, all the things you need to do to understand what is in this structure. And then I want you to create a little sketch like this somewhere or a little text file or something that shows all the chains that are included in the file, um, ligands that are important, amino acids that you're going to want to highlight. Um, the, the advantage of this is when you have everything in place, then when you go to, to, um, uh, to do the visualization, you don't have to be constantly looking back at papers and trying to figure out that, yes, I want to show histine 92, or what are the numbers of the hemes, or whatever. And so, Every illustration that I do, um, I sit down and I write this kind of, of article or this kind of little summary up for myself, just so that um, uh, things will be easy when I go to, to trying to figure out how to get the program to do what I want it to do. So keep that in mind. And I'll, I'll want you guys to have these little things to refer to when we do our consultations. I wanna talk about one other issue that's gonna come to bite everybody here it's a, a real challenge, which is that um, a lot of these structures were solved using X-ray crystallography, which means that the proteins were restrained in a crystal lattice. And that leads to some funny, some funny ways that the, the coordinates are presented in the protein data bank. So what crystallographers do is they only give you coordinates for the things that are unique in the crystal lattice. And so the way that, that that'll impact you guys is, for instance, if we look at this, uh, this structure of a channel, which has four identical protein subunits that form this little nice cyclic channel, in this particular crystal lattice, um, the, the thing crystallizes so that uh, there's only one unique chain that you can build the entire um, the entire assembly of this, this channel by using this fourfold symmetry axis that's part of this, the crystal lattice. In this other crystal structure, the, the, the same protein crystallizes in a different lattice. So in this case, there are actually two unique chains. This one is in a square lattice, this is in a monoclinic lattice. So if you go to the PDB and you look at these files, the file for this one is only going to give you coordinates for one of those chains. So if you want to tell a biological story about the channel, you need to build a, 
a whole channel composed of, of four of those chains using that fourfold axis. In this file, the, the PDB file is going to include coordinates for two different chains, and then you have to multiply those by two using this twofold axis to make the chain. Fortunately, the PDB site takes care of all of this for you, and you just have to make sure that you use the biological assembly, also sometimes called the biological unit. Um, and so this is going to come back and bite you all the time, and I'll just keep reminding you how to get to that biological assembly uh, so that you're always uh, looking at the, uh, the, the relevant assembly of the, of the, the protein complex. Uh, and so this is going to show up in a bunch of different ways uh, as you're looking at things. So here, uh, this is one of the files that the um, uh, Glucotex, Glucodex team might be using. Uh, and if you go uh, to, to this coordinate file, it turns out that the crystal lattice has a whole bunch of chains uh, that are the unique portion, more than you need. It actually has uh, four complete dimers of this uh, receptor. And you're really only interested in looking at one of those dimers, okay? And so in uh, MALSTAR, the way you get to that is up here under model. You can choose the model, which gives you all the chains, or you choose assembly, which will give you just the two that you want. Uh, when we're doing JMOL scripts, it's pretty easy. If we just put this one at the end of the name, that's going to tell JMOL to go and fetch this biolog biological assembly, not the whole uh, crazy file. Uh, and then as we're using this illustration program, there's a checkbox down here that says assembly. And one of the options under that is biological unit one. And so I'll point a few of those things out as we're going through these, uh, these, tu these tutorials. And if you get crazy things happening while you're uh, using these tools yourself, uh, come and bug me it may be a problem with, the, with these biological assemblies. It's a persistent problem. I shouldn't say problem, persistent challenge. Uh, that's a, a direct reflection of the way that these structures are solved. Okay, so moving on. Um, why is this not going forward? Uh, let's talk about first this illustration program. Uh, so this is a program that I wrote many, many, many years ago when I was a postdoc, 1990s. And since it's such an old program, and since uh, I really haven't done any more work on it since then, it's, uh, it's created in a way that uses a very old way of running programs, which is that you have um, a big uh, uh, script file like this that has individual records that tell the program uh, what atoms to include, what, uh, what color you want them to be, what size you want them to be, uh, how you rotate it in space. All of these wacky parameters give background colors and how to draw the outlines and stuff. Anyways, it's, it's very opaque and difficult to use. Um, fortunately, just last year, uh, one of our programmers made a nice little uh, web interface for it, which works pretty well. It's going to work about half the time. About half the time it gets stuck and has problems. Um, but I'll, I'll show you how to use that. Uh, and so the way we're going to, to use this going forward is that you can try playing some games with this interface. And then during the, um, the consultations, I'm going to help each of the teams work up a detailed um, a script to, to uh, create the pictures in exactly the way we want to show it. The disadvantage of this um, this web interface is that it has very limited possibilities for how to uh, control the colors and the sizes and things like that. We're going to want to have more control over that. And so I'll help you design the scripts uh, that'll, um, that'll create the perfect picture for what you want to show. Uh, and I'm just going to do two or three little slides about the technique that's used here. It's based on a a paper that I found way back in the uh, in the 90s uh, on drawing illustrative uh, computer graphics pictures. Um, and uh, I went to this computer graphics conference and then ran back to the lab and and uh, wrote the wrote the program. And it uses a very simple technique. What it does is it, it creates an image of the molecule that just um, shows what the depth is. So this is a picture of a ribosome uh, in these David? places. In, can you enlarge the slides so that we can you all see it clearly? 
better. I think that's about as good as I can do for now. I think this uh, is so, better. Yeah, so these regions in black are far away and the regions in white are close up. Uh, and then the program just goes around and looks for places where the, uh, the color is different in this depth and draws a line between it. So between the white background and this black draws a line. Uh, and it ends up giving these nice uh, kind of illustration-y outlines around everything that picks up all the places where there are big differences and ignores all the places that have little differences. And so I played a whole bunch of games with this when I was a postdoc with shading and stuff. Uh, and it all kind of settled down to the, the style that I use in the molecule of the month now, excuse me, with these outlines uh, that help um, underscore the shape and size of the molecules, how they fit together. And then a very simple color scheme that just shows different protein subunits. So trying to make people understand or be able to see easily what the DNA is in this complex, what the different proteins are um, bound to it and stuff like that. So that's the style we'll be using for uh, the, the first and second sections of the article. Um, we've already talked about this silly script that I'll help you with. Um, and I'll just do a quick little demo here. Um, I'm not expecting everybody to follow along with this uh, unless you'd like to. There's uh, in the general section of um, on Teams, there's a folder called Illustrate Tutorial with a doc file. That hopefully will come up. This is going to be very short. And here's going to be our challenge for the day is trying to see the uh, Teams document and the web browser at the same time. Oh, and I have you guys with chat and pictures and oh, all kinds of stuff at once. Okay, so here's uh, here's that Illustrate uh, web interface. This is on my uh, my lab uh, website. Um, let me just start it so there's nothing there. As you're playing with this, I'll recommend that you restart this uh, page over and over and over again not try to use it multiple times in a row uh, because it gets very confused and, and saves parameters from previous pictures. So use that uh, refresh a lot as you're playing with this. And so the, the simplest way to do this is that you can just type in a PDB ID here. I'm gonna use this one TTT, which I love. Um, hit return. The molecule shows up in this NGL window. NGL is a very fast uh, interactive browser, um, which is also available um, on the, the RCSP site. You're going to go over to that, pick the view that you want. It's always safe to pick biological unit one. And then you hit illustrate, and hopefully it works. You can see this is an old program, and it takes a while to um, generate the picture. Uh, it will not work well for large structures like ribosomes. It'll crash and burn. Um, so uh, you need to keep the smaller stuff. Fortunately, all of our structures that we're doing in this, this boot camp are small enough that it, it should work pretty well. And then once the illustration comes up, you can go over to it. <clears throat> and on Macs, you can just drag it to the desktop or right click. Uh, and do this download image. And that'll, uh, that'll pull a, a PNM file, which is kind of an odd format. I have it set up so that my downloads show conveniently there. Uh, and then hopefully it, you can just drag it back in the, the viewer if you wanna look at it is one way to, to do it. If you have something like uh, Photoshop or I think Preview uh, on Macs will also let you look at it. You might have to find a, um, an image viewer that, that can deal with these PN, PNG files. Okay, so that's the, um, that's the simple way through it. 
The more complicated way that we're probably going to be doing uh, is if we need to use scripts. Uh, where did I put the script here? Uh, if we're using scripts, so I'll restart this whole thing. The, uh, the, the interface also allows you to use a, a custom script, although uh, it's very finicky. So you need to do things in exactly the right order or it will fail. Uh, and I apologize for this. We, we actually don't have any grant funding to work on this, uh, this program. So it proceeds in fits and starts. So here, uh, here's the one of the files that the Scarlet RBC people are probably going to be using. Uh, hemoglobin, fetal hemoglobin. I'm just going to rotate it a little bit. I'm going to pick biological assembly one. And then over here under uh, preview input, input text pulls up that awful script. And what I'm going to do is come up to my external script that I've been writing and copy in all of my custom script. And so, you know, I, I'm not expecting you guys to do that, of course, since you don't have this script on your computer. But, um, and then down here, say, use this input script. And now, hopefully, when the Illustrate shows up, it'll use those new colors. Oh, there. So, here I've created an illustration that has those funny gamma chains, which are the unique ones in the um, in the fetal hemoglobin in bright pink, the uh, uh, beta beta chains, beta or alpha, the other chains <laughs> in darker colors, and here I've highlighted uh, two amino acids, which are things that may or may not have changed. The hemes are in red. So, anyways, in our consultations, what I'll be doing is helping you work up these scripts and then uh, you can drop them in the, uh, in the main interface here to, uh, uh, to get your final pictures. And I'll help everybody with that. There are a lot of problems with this. Okay, moving on. To something that's much more consistent. anybody have questions about that right now? I know that this is just the most uh, uh, introduction to this, but we'll get into it more detail when I'm working one-on-one -on -one or one-on-four uh, with, uh, with the teams. I do have a quick question. Yes. Try here. Um, so let's say you want to highlight a certain amino acid, like, so that, all of that happens within the script. So let's say you want to yeah make a, an amino acid turn into a certain color, you would incorporate that into your script and then that would reflect on the final image, right? So we can do just a tiny little dive into that. Um, just to give you a taste for what we'll be doing. So these, um, can people see that now better? These scripts have a, a very arcane uh, formalism here at the top, where there's a, a set of a string here that I'm going to match with each uh, atom record in the, uh, in the PDB. And so it's going to look and say, is it an atom record? It, does it have a, a, a C in the atom name? Is it chain G? Is it residue number two? Uh, and if all of those things match, then it's going to give it this color, which is red, a little bit of green, and a lot of blue, so it's going to end up being magenta. And this is the radius. So this script, what it does is this is selecting just amino acid 2 and coloring it magenta. This is uh, amino acid 2 of another chain, coloring it magenta. And then all the other uh, atoms in, uh, in chain G are going to be given this color, which is pink. Uh, and this is the other pink. And then if nothing matches all of those, all the rest of them are colored this. And then down here, those are those two hemes. So it's a total mess. You know, you need to, uh, you need to learn, first of all, how uh, the, the logic of the order of this will uh, select the things you want to select. And then also the, you have to learn about RGB colors and 
all of that kind of stuff. I believe it's, it's super long. raw, but I think give you a nice, beautiful spectrum of colors. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, well, I, I use uh, usually very bright colors, so <laughs> uh, you can with these RGB colors you can specify any color. Uh, for instance, those kind of muddy dark, uh, these muddy dark ones down here, uh, those are, are are specified here with um, uh, smaller RGB values. So, and you know, if there are, are people in the uh, in the boot camp here that are interested in these kind of issues. We, we can sit down and talk for an hour about this kind of stuff. I'm always happy to talk about uh, the nuts and bolts of visualization. But I think uh, you know this is something that we could spend a whole boot camp just talking about that. <laughs> and we have we have a lot of other things to to deal with in this. Okay, so let's move on uh, to uh, J Mall, uh, which you're going to be using for a lot of things in this. Uh, I want the slides. So uh, going back to Candace's question about what tools to use for what. Uh, and so the, the short answer, my short answer to that is use whatever tool works for the thing that you want to do. Okay. So Mall Star, uh, as Shuchi was mentioning, is really wonderful for getting a quick look um, while you're at the PDB, if you have to look at 20 or 50 different structures in a row, Mallstar lets you go through and boom, 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 one at a time and get a preview of what's going on. And then it also has a lot of tools to do a deeper dive if you want to look at um, interactions and stuff like that. Mallstar also uh, has been designed, uh, it's, it's one of the most modern uh, molecular graphics programs. And the designers have kept very much in mind that the size of structures is getting larger and larger and larger. So if you want to look at things like ribosomes, Mallstar is a really good option because it can handle um, structures that are that huge. Most other programs just totally fall apart with these large, large structures coming from cryo-EM. For instance, JMAL gets really, really slow and almost unusable. Um, uh, but PyMall is a great, great scientific tool. If you're familiar with it, go and use it because uh, it, it gives you a lot of, of great options. And it's really easy to get in and out once you learn the, uh, the way the developer's mind works. <laughs> um, I personally, I use JMall on my desktop every single day because I find it to be really super user friendly and easy, easy to come up with custom representations to show what I want to show. So I, I use it all the time. It's, it's my go to tool. And I uh, very commonly use Mallstar when I'm exploring the PDB and trying to find structures that are useful as my preview tool, you know, to look to look at structures quickly. But uh, definitely don't don't limit yourself to one tool explore different options. Uh, Chimera as well from UCSF is a, just a spectacular tool with so many great options. Um, it, it takes a little while to learn how to use, but it really gives you a lot of options if, uh, if molecular graphics is something that's going to be important in your research and in your career. Yeah, explore a bunch of options. Okay, end of soapbox. Okay, so JMOL uh, is a tool uh, written for Java. Uh, there's a new JavaScript version that we have to use now when we use it as a, um, a web-based tool. So there's a web applet that allows you to put these nice little um, uh, interactive images into websites. And there's also a standalone version of it uh, that you can have on your desktop if you have Java on your computer um, at, to, to look, at, uh, look at structures on your, uh, on your computer. And I'll just show you real quick what that standalone version looks like. Uh, th this is the tool, like literally everything. Um, it just comes up real quick, has a, a viewer window, a console window. Uh, on the Mac here, at least, what you can do is just take a coordinate file. Here's one mbo.pdb. You can drag it in, and already you're, you're playing games, you know? 
another super wonderful thing about it is that it has a scripting language that's um, that's natural language. So I can say uh, things like select water, space fill, color green. So I mean, what can be easier than that? You know. So I, I use this for everything. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of new computers are not coming with Java. Let me see, I wanna get rid of this for now. Um, so what we're gonna to do today is just so that everybody will get this to work is that we're going to be using the web version that's in uh, at the RCSB for this uh, exercise that we're going to do. Uh, what else do I have here? So this is what I just said. Uh, we're gonna end up writing scripts like this that uh, define our, uh, uh, the interactive JMAL that we want to, JSMAL that we want to present as part of the article. And again, they're, they're written in very natural language, you know, selecting things, coloring them, uh, and stuff like that. And so we're going to walk through all of that. Um, and so this is telling me just to go to Teams. So uh, what I want everybody to do is, is find a way to look on Teams at under general files, uh, JMAL tutorial. I want you to go to this JMAL tutorial.txt file. There's also a doc file, but I'm afraid that if everybody's cutting and pasting out of that, that it's gonna get corrupted. <laughs> so, and uh, with this text file, you, you can't change things. And then what we're also going to need is a window where we can see, um, oh, come on, move. A window where we can get to the, uh, the RCSB. So why doesn't everybody take a minute and juggle those kind of things? If you're having trouble seeing both of these things at the same time, just make sure that you can get a, uh, just, just go, open a web browser and go to the RCSB page. Uh, and then you can just kind of <laughs> try to pay attention to, the, to what I'm typing into my window. So please send me a chat message if you're having trouble getting this to work. Okay, so I think I'll, I'll move forward. Yell at me if you get stuck at any point and I'll slow down, okay? Because sometimes when I start typing, I go very quickly. Uh, so we're going to start by, uh, let, let's look at that wonderful old myoglobin structure and just search for one MBO or really any structure is fine. Go to 3D view for the structure, which is going to pull up the Mallstar page that Chuchi was showing you. And now down here at the bottom, you have some options for different viewers. Uh, one of them is this NGL viewer, which was the uh, precursor to Mallstar, another very fast uh, uh, an interactive uh, visualization tool. And then finally, JSMall is another option down here at the bottom. So go ahead and choose that JSMall option. That pulls up a default uh, representation. And then we're going to go anywhere in the viewer window and right click, and that pulls up a menu. You probably want to do this near the top of the, the window because if you do it down at the bottom, Sometimes you can't get to the rest of the menu, <laughs> okay? And we're gonna choose this console down near the bottom, okay? And what that does is it pulls up a console window. So now it, we have the same functionality that we would have on that um, standalone version. We have a viewer window and we have a console window where we can type commands. Okay, any problems with that? 
just yell at me or drop something in the chat and we'll uh, let you know or help give you some help. Okay, so now in this console, we can start doing stuff. We can say, select water, space fill, color green. So just uh, give that a try. Uh, the uh, select protein, CPK, whoops, space fill. I'm gonna do that a lot. Color group is an interesting one. That colors it uh, with that rainbow color from red uh, to blue. Select heme. Color magenta. Did it show up? There it is. Still left over as ball and stick. Select water, space fill, off. Okay, so is that working for people? Please, if anybody is not able to display at least something, send me a message because um, we're going to be doing a lot of stuff in this. Uh, can you repeat the script that you did for the uh, group color, for the color that is group? So select, select something, select protein, and then color group. So now I, I, I want to give you one warning about if you're going to use this interface, there's one idiosyncrasy that I've never found a workaround. <laughs> so if I say select protein, uh, space fill off. Okay, so now here's that ribbon. And you know, I would very much like to color that ribbon with that group, but um, it doesn't work. I'm, I've never been able to figure out how to change uh, to change that to the group colors with this default ribbon, and it's it's just a, an idiosyncrasy of the way that uh, the the version of JMOL they have on the RCSP site is set up, and so I can show you a workaround for that. But for instance, if you do so, let's say cartoon off, I can just say right now because earlier I had said select protein. It's going to, to, I can just say cartoon off because it knows, nope, that's not right. So let's say select protein cartoon off. Uh, and then let's say backbone to uh, 1.0. So backbone, we'll do a backbone representation with a, uh, a radius of one angstrom. So there's a nice backbone and you can see it understands the, the color commands that, that I'm giving. Color magenta, color group. For some reason that one cartoon command has, has trouble in, in, this, uh, uh, in this interface. Okay, and that'll come back to bite us. But we can, we can do that in the, um, the custom JMOLs that, that you guys are doing. So let's get a little more sophisticated. And you know, I'm, I'm not gonna walk through all of the commands you can do one at a time uh, because there are so many interesting coloring options and stuff. Instead, we're, gonna, we're just gonna kind of play for a while. And then uh, I put up here, there's a, a documentation uh, site that, that has everything in detail, more, more information that you, than you'd ever want. And I also put in the, in the folder, I put a little um, one page cheat sheet from, the, uh, from one of the other groups I work with that has a lot of the commands in it. And uh, quite frankly, the, the way to learn how to use JMOL is just to start trying stuff. Um, and then when you get stuck, you ask somebody <laughs> about a command that's useful for something. So uh, let's keep going. So, uh, <clears throat> To look at different structures, 
uh, using this, uh, this online version of JMOL, you can go to the, uh, to the page if you want to, H -A, uh, to HHB and do the, the same set of um, commands that we just did. Go to the JMOL. and then choose the console. Another way that you can do it, which saves some time, is that you can tell, um, you can tell JMOL here how to find those files that you want to use. And so over here in the, the text, there's this big command here. And I'm just going to cut that and paste it in here. I'm sorry, this is so small but it says load files, and then it has a long path name, which is the place on the web where these coordinates are stored at the, the protein data bank. And that'll pull up those coordinates of, of myoglobin in our current window. So of course this up here, this 2HHB is no longer relevant, right? Because we're looking at, um, at the myoglobin structure. So at any time you can type that command in and it'll load uh, whatever file you want. You'll notice here that I've used pdb1. That one is going to download the um, the biological unit that I was talking about earlier on er, earlier. Um, so we can use that kind of formalism to to load anything we want. Here I'm loading that to HHB and on and on. Um, and surprisingly now, it, so if I say select all, uh, space fill off, wireframe off, uh, cartoon, color group. And so surprisingly now, if, if you start from scratch like that, it lets you do that cartoon coloring. Who knew? Uh, select heme. So I'm, if you notice when I say select heme, I'm using the name of the group H-E-M, not lowercase H-E-M-E. -E. The place that name comes from is if you go back to the structure summary page, right here. HEM is the way that you specify that heme. Okay. Another way that you can get to that, uh, let me go back to this structure. Is if you just hover over, whoops, that's the mall star. Well, in mall star, you can do it as well. If you hover over, you can see down at the bottom it says heme 148. Uh, so that HEM is the the name that you want to save. And in JMOL, if I remember correctly, you can also just hover. Come on, there we go. If you just hover over it, it also says heme there at the beginning. So when you're doing those little sketches that I mentioned at the beginning of this talk, you want to write down those names, H-E-M, H-O-H for water, uh, whatever, so that you'll know what those names are as you um, as you start to do your, uh, your pictures. Okay, what else do we need to cover? So uh, the, the way that everything is done in JMOL is that you select something and then you do something to it. So you're going to select a certain set, set of atoms and then you're going to say, you want to do it in a space fill, or you want to draw a ball and stick, or you want to draw cartoons, or you want to color it green, or whatever. Um, so those selections uh, can be tricky. You can do all kinds of, of very sophisticated things with selections. So there are easy selections, like uh, select protein, color yellow, but not with this. Uh, Space fill, color yellow. I can't. 
so that's an easy one. You can say select all color green. So there you see the, the hemes and the, the proteins. You can say uh, select ligand um, color red. Oh, not the best color choice, green and red. We don't do that anymore. Color yellow. Um, what else? Uh, you can use Boolean operators like select not protein, CPK, color magenta. So that's doing both the heme and all those waters uh, and stuff like that. Uh, so let's say we want to uh, look at some specific amino acids. So let's say this one over here, or, or even better, um, I'll show you a trick that I use all the time. So say select all, space fill off, cartoon off. Okay, so now we have pretty much a blank palette. Uh, so let's uh, select the protein, backbone 1.0, color chain, which is super useful. Shows the four different chains. And now let's say we're coming into this structure and we don't know what those histidines are that coordinate the heme. How are you going to find them? So one way to do that <clears throat> is to select all the histidines. Select his, H-I-S. We're always gonna use those three letter names. Uh, space fill. And now, so now all the histidines in the, um, in the structure have shown up. And what I can do is rotate around and look and look and look. And to me, this one right here looks like it's pretty close, right? That looks like the one I want. So I can click on that and it'll come up with this name, His87C, that's chain C, uh, atom name uh, NE2, NE2 was the, the atom that I happened to click. So now we know that that's the thing that we're interested in. So we go down to our piece of paper and we write His87, chain C. So now I'm going to turn off all of those uh, histidines. So select his space fill off. And now I'm going to try to select just that one histidine. So I'm going to say select 87 colon C. Oops, colon C. 10 atoms are selected. Space fill, color red. So now that um, that format of eighty seven colon C is taken directly from this longer format. Any atom can be specified using that long format: uh, residue name, residue number, chain ID, and atom name. And the, the language also allows you to specify smaller bits of that. So you can say things like select his, or you can say select 87. If you say select 87, um, color magenta, that's going to select residue 87 in all four chains. See? Uh, you can use wildcards. So for instance, you can say select star colon C, that's going to select entire chain C. So you can see these, uh, these selections give you a lot of options for um, isolating and displaying different portions of the molecule in custom ways. And so uh, a lot of the, the fun and art of creating these JMOLs is coming up with, excuse me, uh, the, the selection schemes that, 
that color the things that, that you want to highlight in ways that people can see, excuse me, can see them easily. Any questions about this so far? I know it's a lot coming at you real fast, um, but uh, you, you really just need to play with it for a while uh, and, and learn some of the, the, um, the options that you'll have. Um, I want to talk about one funny thing about Boolean selections. So, uh, so everybody uh, try um, that uh, select star colon C or something like that and make sure that you can uh, select one of the whole chains. And so now, uh, something that we commonly want to do is to select both of the beta chains, right? And so, I mean, you, you could do that in a clunky way and say, uh, select star colon A, color green, select star colon B, color green. But that's clunky, right? You want to select both of them at the same time. And so now this uses a Boolean selection. So what you need to do to select both at the same time is say select star colon A or star colon B, color yellow. So the way those Booleans work is that you have to think about going to each atom and uh, doing that selection test. So you go to, to atom number one and you say, is this chain A? You say no. Is it chain B? Yes. So then it'll select it, right? It's like saying, um, uh, how, do I, how do I phrase this? Select all the people, all the participants that are women and select all the participants that are men. So are you, um, I'm trying to figure out this example. <laughs> um, oh, I see. The, the, the way you do this is you think about yourself, and I'm going to ask you a question. Are you a, a woman? Are you a man? Are you a woman and a man? No, you're a woman or a man. Got it. Or something in between. So is that is the boolean uh, is the boolean issue clear? It's uh, that's something that's going to come and and bite you as well. Um, but if you're not getting the results that you want, try using or instead of and, and I can help you with those. Okay, so down at the bottom here, the representations that you have are. Um, let's turn all this off. Select all backbone off, wireframe off, space fill off. So the, the representations that you have to play with um, that are common ones are cartoon. So here we go, select protein, cartoon. That'll give a, a very typical um, Jane Richardson style cartoon representation. Good if you're talking about protein folding. So the folded group is probably going to want that. Um, cartoon off. Uh, I use these backbones a lot. Backbone 1.0. The thing these are useful for, uh, for instance, is uh, showing the, the chain. And then if you want to show particular amino acids, um, not a glycine not a protein. Here we go. So if we wanted to show this as spartate, you can then say select 74 colon C wireframe 1.0 and it'll show a side chain coming off of the backbone. That way you can show just one, uh, just one side chain and the rest of the protein is just an, an easy uh, um, non-distracting backbone. Uh, another thing, uh, let's turn all this off. Select 
select protein uh, and then space fill is also a, a useful thing to do if you want to show the, the shape and size of the whole protein. Let's see how are we doing for time? We're getting down to the bottom. I want to show you one fancy thing that's, uh, that's an important thing to do when you're getting down to the final refining of these JMOLs. Uh, um, let me check something really quick. Jeez. Yeah, let's, uh, let's go to this one GCN real quick and look at that just because it's an easy one and we'll be able to see the thing I wanna show. Okay, so when we go to that one GCN, let's turn this cartoon off, select all, cartoon off, and then backbone 1.0, color chain. Okay, so now we have kind of a generic looking chain here. And let's say I wanna show one of these amino acids. Uh, oh, that's a good one. This is a lysine, lysine 12. So if I say select 12, wireframe 1.0, Color CPK. CPK is a Cori Pauling Colton. Uh, it's a the the people that uh, did um, the the first plastic molecular models and developed this coloring scheme. So CPK gives atomic coloring. Um, you can see that we really don't want to show this uh, uh, the carbonyl group or the the nitrogen in the back chain and the in the backbone of this uh, this backbone representation. We'd rather just show the side chain. And so a, a tricky selection to do that. So let's turn this wireframe off. A tricky selection to do this is to go select whatever the amino acid is, 12, and side chain or alpha. I wish I could make this bigger. That's a little bigger. It's going to be hard to see. So, and this is also in the somewhere in the uh, the tutorial file I did. What this does is it selects the amino acid, and then uh, just will pull out the side chain atoms or this alpha carbon, which is in the main chain. And so now if we do that wireframe, it'll just show that side chain. And so that refinement makes for a much, much nicer uh, picture when you're doing your, your interactive JMOLs. Okay, uh, one little refinement you can do uh, in these, uh, these JMOLs. The, I typically use black, black backgrounds um, which I think you get to background black. Um, yeah, so the interactive ones we typically do with black backgrounds. Uh, and there's a, a way to use depth queuing, which is set Z shade. And that makes distant portions get darker. Sometimes it looks good, particularly if you're looking at big complicated things. Uh, it's not really needed in this tiny, tiny structure, but you might play games with that if it's uh, and, and see if that helps make it more uh, readable. And then finally, if you want to write an image, you can say write image uh, something. This is glucagon dot jpeg jpg, and it'll it'll write that to your uh, to your computer. And then you can try to figure out where it is that it's dropping it on your computer. 
So that's the way to write images. Uh, what else did I want to show you? Oh, the, the process of what we're going to do, be doing as we're creating our JMOLs. So take a look over here in the, the tutorial. You're going to be writing these big scripts um, just in doc files that have a load command that loads the coordinate files. Uh, these are a bunch of commands that turn off the default representations. These are a bunch of commands that are um, putting in what I want the new representation to look, look like. And finally, three commands that set the orientation to something that I like. And so the way that this is going to work is that you'll just copy this whole script and paste it into the, the window. When you hit return, boop, up it comes. So that, that's the, the scripted myoglobin that, that I put together there. Uh, and then you can just change the scripts over here as much as you want and test them over and over and over again until you get uh, the, um, the look that you want. Uh, the way that you get this or this, uh, these orientations here is that in the console you say um, show orientation. And as soon as your window is lining up, it gives you that rotate Z, rotate Y, rotate Z. And so you can just type those into your script. And I think, yeah, so I wrote that in this, uh, this tutorial as well. So I think that's most of it. Uh, uh, the, this whirlwind introduction to JMOL. Uh, so as I'm doing consultations with everyone, we can sort out all those, the bells and whistles that you'll need to, to show off your particular, um, your particular subject. Um, so I suggest now you just start playing some games and get familiar with the molecules that you um, that you're going to need to do, and I can help you refine uh, refine the the representation you're you're doing. Uh, I had a few things to to mention to each of the teams here at the end. Um, so on this teams, I've provided a template of one of these scripts for each of the molecules that you'll be doing, um, the suggested ones for your, for your interactive JMOLs, just to get you started. Um, they don't have anything fancy, so, so you'll, you'll be customizing them to, to show what you wanna show. Um, two of the teams are going to have two different uh, structures in the JMOL showing, uh, for instance, in the, the Glucodex team are probably going to show uh, a drug complex and the natural ligand complex. So you want to make two separate scripts for that and try to keep the two scripts very similar to each other since we're going to be flipping between the two when people view it. And so you want to make them as similar as possible. Um, this, some of them, including the, the Glucodex team, has a problem that some of the structures have multiple chains, but that works fine if you use that PDB1. Um, what else? And then the RNAs P team uh, is going to have to bug me because one of the things that you want to show, which is this extra little piece of chain, has a real funny way that you have to specify it. It, it doesn't come up as a, a standard um, a nucleic acid strand. So I can help you with that. And little things like connecting up the platinum to the DNA, uh, we'll have to we'll have to play some games. Great. So uh, why don't I take some questions in the last few minutes, uh, and then we'll just jump into this uh, uh, after lunch and tomorrow. Are we good? So David, uh, Natalie has a question about coloring by charge. Oh yeah, you know, we might be able to do that. Uh, so.
So, hmm. But there, hmm, there could be a problem in that it doesn't know what the charges are. Uh, something that I very, very often do is I do um, something like select arginine and lysine, uh, color blue, uh, select asp or glue, color red. So I do kind of a fake charge uh, representation like that. Um, I don't exactly know how we would do a real classic coloring a molecular service by charge in JMOL. You, you might have to go to a different tool if that's something you need to do in your research. Okay, well, uh, why don't we break for lunch um, and come back at one o'clock. Uh, let's see, what do we have uh, this afternoon? What we're gonna do is have uh, teamwork with everyone. You'll uh, break into your teams uh, and what we want for the readout at the end of the day is um, we want some bullet points, uh, kind of a short outline of the topics that you're going to want to, to cover. In your, in your topic. Uh, I'm also going to be checking in with each team sometime this afternoon uh, to discuss in a little more detail some of the um, illustrations that, that you're going to want to do, just so I'll be ready to help you with the stuff that you want. <laughs>